Hey, I am Katie and I am one half of the Literacy Ladies and Krista is the other half of the Literacy Ladies. Krista's at home with her um, family and recovering from not feeling great today. So um, I am on my own. Usually Krista's here and hanging out with us in the comments. So I'm going to try to keep an eye on both. Um, and yeah, usually she'll also post links for us. So I will put the links um, of all the things that we talked about today in the comments after we are done here tonight. So, hey, again, um, I'm Katie and I am from the Literacy Ladies. Krista is the other Literacy Lady. Um, if you haven't been here with us before, we are here every Monday night at 9. We're always promising to be done by 9.30, um, usually shorter than that. But we know that as um, mamas, which most of you are that come join us here, uh, your time is very valuable. So um, we love to be here with you in the evenings. Most moms have shared with us that's the time that works best for them after they get the kids in bed. Um, but we want to give you some quick, actionable tips that you can take with you use tomorrow or this week right away um, without having to put any you know too much planning into anything and then we'll get you on your way quickly this evening so we don't take up too much of your time so thanks for being here with us tonight and um, if you are here will you say hello in the comments and because we're going to talk a little bit about learning materials and games tonight um, will you share in the comments what is a favorite learning game um, or just any game that you play with your kids um, or with your family or maybe that you played um, growing up with your own family. So a game in the comments, learning game or fun game that you like to play with your family. If you will share that with us um, in the comments, that would be great. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm looking at my screen to make sure I can see see both so I can keep an eye on it today. We'll jump in and get started. So um, today we're going to talk about how to make learning at home easy and fun. So we know that some moms that join us here um, or families um, are homeschool families. Some are um, full-time working parents with their kids um, in grade school for the majority of the time. Some have kids that are home that are distance learning maybe right now, um, or maybe you're stay home, stay at home parent and your kiddos are not yet in kindergarten. So we kind of have a range of families that are joining us here that we're excited to be a part of our community. You are all welcome. And we promise to always try to share tips that um, will be uh, helpful to all of those families, different types of families, and then also all kinds of levels for your kiddos. So we've got families that join us that have kiddos that are struggling learners and they're looking for tips and ways to help their kids get back, back on track. And then also kids that are advanced readers and writers and they want to continue to challenge them. So again, lots of tips that you can use no matter where your kids are or um, exactly what age level your or age range your kids are at. So tonight we're going to talk about specifically ways to make learning at home easy and fun. So maybe that means learning at home because you're homeschooling. Maybe it means because um, you're helping kids with homework after school or you're helping brush up on skills on Saturday morning, whenever it works for you. But we want to make sure that the learning at home um, is fun for our kids, of course. That's always going to make it easier for us as moms if we're not pulling teeth to try to get them to do the learning, right? But for sure, we want it to be easy on families. Nobody needs another thing on their plate. And you all are here, obviously, because you love to help your kiddos, um, but we don't want to make anything more complicated for you at all, right? So lots of easy, tangible tips. So we're mainly going to focus tonight on things that you can stock up on, gather, and borrow to have at your fingertips at your disposal to use as you're helping your kids with their learning, okay? So... Um, we think that preparing ahead of time, you guys, is like your best friend, okay? Anything that you can do to prepare ahead of time is going to make life easier the day of, right? So when you have a kiddo that's sitting down and they're struggling with sight words, you don't want to have to come up with a way to help support them um, on the fly and look for materials. If you've got everything prepared and ready to go that you can just grab really quickly to help them out with whatever they're working on, life is going to be easier, right? Easier for you, less stressful for the kiddos and the parents. So we're going to start with um, some of our favorite items to stock up on. And again, I'll put the link in the comments to a blog post that we've got all about this. So um, nobody take notes. I don't, you wouldn't do that anyways, right? But um, all the links that I share with you, all of the ideas will all be in the comments there. And you can grab, um, head over to that blog post and pick everything up there. But uh, we're going to start with some items that you might want to stock up on. 
In that blog post, we also share with you um, another one where we write all about creating a learning area where you keep all of these supplies. So that's a separate topic, but we like to keep things in one spot so that anytime you're helping teach your kids or support their learning, you can grab things really easily that are all organized in one space. So uh, we use a little um, closet that used to be like our vacuum closet in the kitchen because it's right there where learning is usually happening. Uh, a rolling cart I know a lot of families use, that would work too. But whatever you can do to find, carve out a little space to keep all of your learning materials, grab those things and get them into one spot, that would be um, super helpful for you. So here we go. I'm going to tell you some of our favorite things that we have found helpful to stock up on. Maybe they're things you want to buy. Maybe you already have them. Um, maybe you want to throw them on a Christmas wish list or birthday wish list for your kids. But they're really helpful to have around while you are helping your kids learn at home. Okay. So learning games is the first one. And I know I had said, if you've got ideas of learning games, things that you use to help your kids learn fun games that you play as a family that double as like learning, um, throw them in the comments. And I, I'm sorry, I'm not doing a good job keeping track of, um, comments cause I'm hanging, I'm want to make sure I'm staying focused with you guys, but some learning games that are favorites at our house are, um, the sneaky snacky squirrel. So if you haven't heard of this one before, this is a like a really emergent level um, game. It's like ages three plus. But what we love about this one is that it helps develop fine motor skills. So if you're working on getting a little writer writing at your house, this, this is a great one because it has the little, um, well, it's got an acorn stuck in there, of course, but it looks like this. It's a little pincher to um, pick up the acorns that they use. It's a strategy game, but it helps develop those fine motor skills. Um, and it has like a pincher grasp of practice for um, your emerging writers. So Stinky Snack Squirrel, one of our favorites. Um, you've probably heard us talk about the TV show Super Why. It's like our favorite show for preschool, kindergarten age kiddos that encourages um, reading. And they have a board game as well. I don't have that one right here in front of us, in front of me. Krista has it at her house, but it's a Super Why ABC letter game. And again, the link to that will be in the blog post that I'll put in the comments for you. But super fun, easy way to get your kids sitting down for a game where they don't really feel like learning is happening um, or they don't realize it. They're just sitting down to play the game and um, you have chosen a game that is a learning game too. So lots of other ideas for you in that blog post, but um, Zingo and Sequence, there's a Sequence for Kids and a Sequence with Letters game. Those are some favorites. Um, uh, the Cheese Dip game is a really fun one. So all of those, we're going to share those links with you. If you want to stock up on some new games, that's a way to slip learning in really easily and do it in a way that um, maybe they don't even realize learning is happening because you're just playing a game together. Okay, one of our other favorite items to stock up on is the Alphabet Acorns. So if you have not seen these before, they are amazing. And um, my... Uh, good friend Lauren shared these with me, this idea. And so these ones are so nice, you guys, for, um, let me make sure I open it and can show it to you. So nice for little, little kiddos. So, you know, free readers all the way up to kiddos that are already reading and you can challenge them in different ways. So they come with every letter of the alphabet and um, inside it has capital on the outside, lowercase on the inside, and then all of them have a little item inside of course, this one is missing because my kid's been playing with it. Um, but they have a little item inside that um, starts with that letter. So you can like sort out just the vowels. You can build words with them. Alphabet acorns, they're one of our very favorite learning activities. So these are fun things, again, you want to stock up on, throw them in your learning closet, pull them out when you need something fun and easy to do with your kiddos that feels like you're just hanging out and playing, but is also a learning activity. I know I'm talking fast, you guys, I always do. I wanna give you tons of really great things that you can grab and use right away and not waste your time ever. So I'm gonna keep throwing a few more ideas at you and remember all these links will be in the blog. So no need to write anything down or look it up yet, okay? All right, so one of my next favorite um, learning items that you might wanna stock up on, stock up on is magnetic letters. So there's a wide range, of course, of magnetic letters that you can get a hold of. But this leapfrog, game is one of my favorites. If you um, don't have this and you have a young um, like baby through five, you're going to want to run out and get one of these. So the letters go in there. There's one for every letter. When you press it, um, it sings the alphabet or it sings what the letter sound is. So great way for even like my 19 month old loves to um, 
play with this and is learning letters and letter sounds. And then you can just take all of these letters off, use them on any magnet board or cookie sheet, and they just become magnetic letters to play with. So my five-year-old also uses these to build words with as well, okay? So we've got uh, a link in that blog to one of our favorite um, other magnetic letter sets that also comes with lowercase letters. So if you haven't noticed this as a parent, a lot of the things that you purchase or that you use that are um, letter games or magnets or anything like that come with only uppercase letters. And we want to make sure that we're exposing kids to lowercase letters and early and right away. So um, finding the magnetic letters that come with lowercase is another high recommendation of ours. Okay. All right. So we're still on stock up. I've been sharing a few like ideas, things that you might want to put on a Christmas list, a birthday list, or stock up on your own, throw them in your Amazon cart. Um, but the other thing that you may want to stock up on or just gather would be writing utensils. So when you want to have a learning area put together and ready for your kids, you want things, um, there and ready for them to grab and write with color with, um, you know, all the writing utensils in one spot. So nobody's digging for anything and it makes it nice and fun and easy. So I want to show you how we organize writing utensils and usually suggest doing this. Um, so these are just like teacher tips that we got used to doing in a classroom that have been really helpful at home. So you can see my writing utensil bin. I'm going to try not to dump it out, you guys. But it looks like this. I'll pull them out for you. We generally tend to dump all the crayon boxes and marker boxes because you know they all fall apart anyways then you're taping the bottom so you want to just have them nice and easy for kids to grab and use right so we just use old jars at our house pickle jar whatever you have and um, we're going to keep those in a jar like this and then keep the whole jar in one big bin like the bin that I was just showing you so that way when your kids are sitting down to color on a Saturday morning or do homework after school or you're working on a learning activity with them you can very easily just grab the whole bin of writing utensils all the markers colored pencils crayons um, pens pencils everything are right in there and ready to go even better if you can put it on a low shelf that they can grab themselves, help themselves to, again, making life easier for the parents, right? It's always um, going to end up making life easier for the kids and having them enjoy things more if nobody's stressed out, okay? So um, one last suggestion about writing utensils. Again, this is a, a teacher tip. I don't know if we would have thought of um, before, but having an electric pencil sharpener is a game changer. So if you have kids learning at your house and you haven't tried out getting an electric pencil sharpener for your house yet, you're going to want to um, throw that on your wish list. Okay. And they are kind of expensive for a good one, maybe like $18. Um, but they are so worth the amount of times that they will be used. And they, if you get a good one, then they last for a long time. So cheaper ones end up tending to break anyways, and then they're not worth having so many on. So electric pencil sharper, sharpener, such a game changer, you guys, because kids, when they're using a little, so see, I have a little pencil sharpener here. This is good for fine motor skills, of course, when they're just sharpening their own pencils, but they lose focus and stamina and motivation. And really they, they lose um, interest if they're writing. So if you have kids that are writing, you want them to keep writing to get all their ideas on paper and not to get paused by, oh, my pencil's broken. Now I have to go find this. Now it's going to take me a while to sharpen it before I jump back into my writing or to my homework. And it causes a whole distraction or they're coming to you asking families to help them out um, with finding a sharpened pencil. So having an electric pencil sharpener right near your learning area or where the kids are often doing homework is super helpful. All age levels going to be so helpful to have that. Um, that is one thing that you will not regret adding to your collection of things to help your kids with their learning electric pencil sharpener. Okay, I'm going to move on. I have so many more items that we could share with you for things to stock up on, but I want to move on so we can get you some items to gather that hopefully maybe you already have. So in that same little learning area, some ideas for things to gather would be puzzles. So any puzzles that you have in the house um, or learning items like this that I was just sharing with you that you already have, just gathering them all into one spot makes it super easy for you as a parent and for your kids to jump into some learning without having to search for things um, or without that like, oh, I wonder what I should do when they're looking all over um, the place, their bedroom or playroom or the basement or something. But if all the learning items are in one spot, that is super helpful. So puzzles, highly recommend getting all of our puzzles in one spot. And then, um, of course, all the things I just shared with you, like 
uh, writing utensils, but craft things that you can just gather that you already have and getting them into one spot so you can pull them out and use them when you need them is super helpful. One of my favorite things that is totally free for you to grab and use is an egg curtain. I use these for all kinds of different things. And then, um, they're always ready to go because you just put them in the same little spot shelf in the closet with all the learning things. So, or whatever works for you. Maybe it's a basket under the kitchen table. It doesn't have to be complicated, but next time you use the last egg in the egg curtain, um, just throw this in the pile of learning items and you can pull it out for so many different things. So I love to use it for paint. Um, and you can use all the like separate little compartments to put paint in. And, um, helps keep the, the paintbrushes clean and everything nice and easy. You can also use it for sorting. They're super great for sorting. Um, you could have kids cutting out um, like magazine pictures with different letter sounds. They can sort them into here. If you've got younger kiddos that are working on colors or um, shapes, things can be sorted here. You could find items around the house to sort into here by beginning letter sound or by items that rhyme. Um, it's a great dice shaker. So you could, if you're working on math homework together, put dice in here to shake up and use. Kids can sort coins in them. So the po possibilities are endless, but it's a free um, learning item that I would suggest definitely gathering at home and having in one spot. Other things that you maybe seem normally that you would toss or recycle, um, like your oatmeal bins, toilet paper rolls, all of those things. I just have one bin where you keep all that stuff and gather it that you can pull out and use when you are looking for items um, to help support your kids learning. So making learning fun and easy is, it's super helpful, you guys, if you've got all of these things ready to go. That's really um, our biggest suggestion for you tonight is to stock up on these things, gather what you've got, get it all in one spot so learning can be easy and fun when you can pull things out that are already ready to go, like the learning games, the puzzles, um, the writing utensils where nobody's digging for anything because it's already organized, or the egg cartons where you can throw dice or coins or um, items around the house that start with the same letter or paint. Um, but you don't have to come up with ideas because these things are already together and in one spot and you can just pull them and use them and it makes life so much easier. Okay, last tip we want to share with you are things to borrow um, because I love free. I don't know about you, but um, maybe you don't want to buy anything and you just want to find some new things that you can borrow that will make life easier for you and for um, your kiddos and to get them excited about learning again. So one thing, I know I mentioned puzzles, but puzzles are a big thing that we in our house borrow from friends. We've got some friends that we do puzzle swaps with. Um, we just, right now we've been leaving them on porches and it's pretty fun that the kids are like, oh, I got a new, a new puzzle on the porch. So we just share with friends, we swap puzzles um, because your kid sometimes gets you know bored of doing the same puzzles over and over. So you swap with a friend and then you swap back and then you can swap with another friend. So you're not buying puzzles, of course, um, all the time, but they're getting an added challenge and it's like a fun, exciting thing that feels new. Books are another thing that are really great to share, especially if your kids go through different interests. So you could tell a friend, hey, right now we're super interested in Clifford books. Do you guys have any of those? Throw them in a Ziploc baggie, write their name on the front. You can trade those book bags with friends really easily. Um, Kid-friendly and family-friendly magazines are another thing. If you're going to cut out of them, I guess it's really not borrowing. It's more, you know, like gathering from the friends that are willing to share them with you. But asking friends and family to share their kid and family from friendly magazines um, are a really great thing to have on hand when you're helping your kiddos learn. So great way for them to look through. Um, we love highlights magazines, which are obviously made for kids. But, you know, you can like get home and garden or whatever family friendly magazines that you guys could get from um people that are willing to share with you, but they're great for highlighting sight words, cutting out letters, cutting out um, letters and building words, cutting out pictures of things that start with different letters, having magazines around that your kids can write on, draw on, highlight, color, cut, um, are a really great way to add in learning fun. And if you can gather them from friends and family and have them in this one little learning spot that we keep talking about, you can pull them out and use them right away and easily without having to um, do a lot of planning ahead. So I hope that you have come up with or thought of a couple ideas here, um, things that we shared that would be helpful for you that you might wanna go stock up on or gather from things that you already have in your house 
or um, start to borrow from friends, arrange a puzzle swap this week that you can do with a friend or family member that would like to exchange puzzles with you so that you can feel like the learning in your home has like a new refresh. Um, we want things to be easy for you and tangible and of course really fun for the kids. If we make learning fun for the kids, that's what gets them engaged and that's what makes the biggest impact with their learning. So thank you for hanging out with us tonight. I hope you got a few great ideas that you might use with your family this week. A um, couple reminders I want to share with you. If you're looking for more tips like this, fun ideas, of course, come join our Facebook group of parents. We've got a great um, community there. It is called the Literacy Ladies um, Parents of Elementary Kids. Sorry, I almost forgot it. So you can search for that in Facebook and find that group, but it's a really great group of parents and teachers that are sharing ideas with each other for free all the time. Um, great group to join. And then of course, grab our parent guide. So we've got a nine steps to keep your kids busy and learning. Parent guide is also completely free. Just all of our best tips and things that we love to share with families. And we wanna share that with you. So make sure that you grab that as well. And I'll put a link to that in the comments here. Um, that's completely free for anybody to download and print and hang on the side of your fridge for all of our best tips to refer to anytime. And you knew I was going to say this. Um, if you are looking for another way to make learning really easy and fun at your house, sign your kids up for a virtual literacy camp. So Krista and I founded the literacy camp seven years ago. It's virtual this year and it is so much fun fun. Um, I've got other videos where I share more about that, so I won't go into depth here, you guys, but it is really, really fun experience for kids. So sign them up for a week of virtual literacy camp. They can do the week the way it is laid out for you. Um, it's all pre-recorded, so and you get a detailed schedule, so no thinking for you. You can follow it exactly or once you purchase, you have access to just use it whenever you want. So you don't have to do it in one week. You could do one lesson a week throughout the whole summer if you want to. Um, but go grab a spot in virtual literacy camp for your kids. Your family will love it. And there is an early bird discount that is going through May 31st. So cheaper rate if you go grab it before May 31st. All right. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us tonight and um, looking forward to seeing you next Monday. Krista will be live tomorrow, Tuesdays at 4.30 to share our five favorite books this week. Have a good night.